May the lamb that was slain receive the reward of his sufferings. All glory and honor and power be unto the name of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God. Don't be afraid to plead with those you love. Don't be ashamed of Jesus or the gospel of his love. Lift up your voice in boldness, declare the truth you know, that Jesus Christ is risen and he can save your soul. Cry out against the darkness, plead with men to turn from sin. Repent. Jesus Christ said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation. <clears throat> Jesus Christ is the only way one can receive forgiveness of sins. Jesus Christ is the only truth. Anything you believe in that contradicts what Jesus Christ said or taught is a lie. Because he is the truth. He is the way. If you follow Jesus Christ, he'll lead you into everlasting life. But if you follow your sin, you'll end up in hell. That's the way it works. He's the only way. He's not just one of the ways. If you're going to follow him, you have to follow him wholeheartedly. You can't follow him halfway. Those who follow him halfway are hypocrites. Jesus Christ said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. Many people here in the Bible Belt who claim to love Jesus Christ, but they sin against him over and over and over again. Every single day, they're sinning against someone they say they love. Sounds like a contradiction to me. How can you say you love Jesus Christ when you continue to offend him and grieve him and anger him? How can you say you love Jesus Christ if you continue to lust and have sex outside of marriage and get drunk and use drugs? The very things Christ died to free you from are the very things many of you engage in day in and day out. The very things that grieve the heart of God are the very things that bring happiness to your heart for many of you. Should not be so. The Bible says that God is angry with the wicked every day. If you're living a wicked life, God is not pleased with you. God is not your friend. If you're living a wicked life, God is your enemy. And you are his enemy if you're living a wicked life. The Bible says adulterers and adulteresses. Do you not know that friendship with the world is enmity with God? Whoever therefore makes himself a friend of the world, whoever therefore is a friend of the world, makes himself an enemy of God. Don't be an enemy of God today. Be a friend of God through Jesus Christ, through his shed blood on the cross, that you might have forgiveness of sins, that you might be made right with God through the blood of Jesus Christ. This power in the blood, power in the blood. Only through the blood of Jesus Christ. Without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. But his shed blood can wash away your sins. You only but fling yourself upon his mercy and repent of your sins, forsake your sins, you can receive mercy from God today. But if you rather continue on in your sins, God will not give you mercy. God will give you what you deserve. His judgment and His wrath. But the Bible says, The Son of Man will send out His angels, and He will gather out of His kingdom all things that offend, and those who practice lawlessness, and will cast them into the furnace of fire, the bewailing and gnashing of teeth. 
Then the righteous will shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. And it's only the righteous who will shine forth in God's kingdom. Those who want to live wicked lives, having sex outside of marriage with a boyfriend or girlfriend with a complete stranger, engaging in homosexual activity, getting drunk, using drugs, following other religions with their false religions, idolatry, uh, God will give you what you deserve in the end for rejecting uh, His Word, rejecting His authority in your life, rejecting His Son, Jesus Christ, and living the way you want to live instead. That's what will happen to sinners in the end. They'll end up in the Bible, what the Bible calls the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Revelation 21.8 says, He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I'll be his father, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, the unbelieving, the abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in a lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. The words of Jesus Christ in Revelation 21.8. Yet it's not God's heart to condemn anyone. It's not God's will that you perish in your sins. It's not God's will that you get what you deserve for your sins. It's God's will towards you, God's desire towards you, that you get what you don't deserve for your sins, which is mercy and kindness and forgiveness. That's God's will for you, that you would uh, humble yourself and submit yourself to God, that you would forsake all of your sins and follow the Lord Jesus Christ in holiness and obedience. That's God's will for you. So many of you would rather have your sin. Many of you would rather have sex outside of marriage. Many of you would rather look at pornography. Many of you would rather lie and steal and be covetous. Many of you would rather be idolaters over your favorite sports stars or athletic teams or celebrities or musicians. You would rather spend all your time thinking about those things than thinking about the one who died for you on the cross, the one who offers you life through his shed blood, the one who offers you life through his life, you'd rather reject him and go your own way. Well, I plead with you to not do that. If you are doing that, to stop doing that, and instead to follow Jesus Christ. Because knowing the terror of the Lord, I attempt to persuade man. And I'm an ambassador of Christ, pleading with you on his behalf to be reconciled to God. As a sinner, you are separated from God. As a fornicator and a drunkard, you are separated from God. As covetous and lustful, you are separated from God. But God is not far from any one of us. But he wants you to seek after him with all your heart and to give up your sins and follow Him. It's your only hope. He said you must repent or you are going to perish. The Bible says, Repent therefore and be converted that your sins might be blotted out, that times of refreshing might come from the presence of the Lord. See, in order to become a Christian, in order to be right with God, you have to repent. Repent means to change your mind about your sin, to go the other way from your sin. If you're living in sin, you turn your back on all of it, and you turn towards the Lord Jesus Christ and follow Him instead. But the Scripture also says you must be converted. Converted means you get changed from one thing to the next. And in this context, you get changed from a sinner to a saint from an ungodly person to someone who loves God and wants to keep His commandments. That's what you must become. So if you're satisfied with your old wicked ways, then you're not qualified for salvation. You have to be dissatisfied with your sinful ways. You have to be convicted of your sin and see how wrong it is. And see, you're a hell-deserving sinner. 
These are the primary, the first steps to becoming a Christian. Is to be dissatisfied with your sin, to realize you're on your way to hell, you're deserving of God's judgment and wrath, that you're a sinner, and that you don't deserve anything good from God. You don't deserve His grace, His mercy, His love, His care. That is the first step to becoming a Christian. Now, you're not a Christian yet if you're at that step. That's the first step. Then you must humble yourself, and you must give up your sin. Throw it away. Cast it away. Surrender all to Jesus Christ. Then you put your trust and faith in Jesus Christ who died for you on the cross. And he's, the Bible says if you'll do these things, you'll humble yourself, repent, and believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, that he will cleanse you, he will forgive you, the Holy Spirit will come and live inside of you, and you'll become what the Bible says, a new creature in Christ. You'll become born again, of the Holy Spirit. And that's what you need. You become born again. You only are born once, you'll die twice. You'll face physical death, and then the second death, which I talked about a little while ago, which is being cast into the lake of fire. But if you're born twice, you only die once. You only face physical death. Someone who is born of God, and he remains in God, who abides in Him, will not sin. And they have passed from death to life. And the second death has no power over them. But most of you would rather be sinners. Let's face it. Most of you would rather get drunk on the weekends. Most of you would rather smoke your pot. Most of you would rather look at pornography and lust and be covetous. Most of you rather focus on temporal things instead of the eternal things. The Bible says, take heed and beware of covetousness. For one's life does not consist in the abundance of things he possesses. What the scripture says. One's life does not consist in the abundance of things you possess. That's why Jesus Christ said it in Matthew 6. Do not lay up for yourself treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and thieves break in and steal, but lay up for yourself treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroy and thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. No one can serve two masters, for they will hate the one and love the other, else will be loyal to the one and despise the other. You can't serve God and riches. God wants all, or He wants none. Those who are lukewarm, Jesus Christ said He'll spew out of His mouth in the end. The Bible says in Proverbs, Riches do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. Riches do not profit in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivers from death. There's never been a time that I'm aware of where people put a U-Haul trailer in the back of a, of a hearse and take their riches with them to their funeral. And even if they did and buried all their riches with them, moth and rust would still destroy those things. Thieves would still be grave robbers and break in and steal those things. Because you can't take it with you. But Jesus Christ said to follow Him and He will give you eternal life. Follow Him and you will not perish. And Jesus Christ will never lead you to sin. So if you claim to be a Christian and you're sinning every day, it's quite evident you're not following Jesus Christ. It's common sense. If you're really following Jesus Christ, you won't be sinning. Jesus Christ does not lead you to look at pornography. Jesus Christ does not lead you to be an idolater. Jesus Christ does not lead you to be a drunkard. Jesus Christ does not lead you to have a filthy potty mouth. Jesus Christ leads in righteousness. The Bible says Jesus Christ loved righteousness and hated lawlessness. Is that you? Can you say the same thing? Can you say you love righteousness and hate lawlessness? That's what Jesus Christ did and still does do. He loves righteousness and hates lawlessness. And if you don't love righteousness and hate lawlessness, you're not like Jesus Christ.
You're the opposite of him. But you know who hated, who hates righteousness and loves lawlessness? The devil. So who are you more like? Do you love righteousness or love sin? Do you hate sin or do you hate righteousness? Most people in this world, they, they can't say they hate sin. They love sin. They engage in it every single day. With their lust, their porn watching, entertaining themselves to death in front of the TV for hours upon hours every day, standing in front of the, uh, sitting in front of the video game system for hours upon hours every day, entertaining themselves to death, plugging their ears with filthy music that glorifies sin and blaspheme God. You can't do these things and be a Christian. A Christian doesn't do these things. A Christian loves God. A Christian hates sin. A Christian does what is right because they've been transformed by the miraculous power of the Holy Spirit. They're living a different way. They're living a new way. The Bible says, let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor what is evil. Cling to what is good. Let love, true love now, by definition, doesn't have hypocrisy in it. It loves what is good, it clings to what is good, and it abhors and hates what is evil. What would you think of a supposed friend who continued to offend you and treat you wrong and punch you and do mean things to you and despise you? You would conclude after a while they weren't really your friend. So how can you say you're the friend of God when you sin against him day in and day out, reject his word, ignore his word, don't read his word that he sent to you to know the truth, to know how you should live, how you should walk, how you should walk in this life? How can you say you're a Christian and do those things? You can't. Nothing but a hypocrite if you're like that. The hypocrites will not inherit God's kingdom. I'm not here for your entertainment center. I'm here for your salvation, that you might be saved. No, I'm not a sinner anymore. I follow Jesus Christ. Okay, let's 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 have a little English class lesson for a second. Let's see if you know English. All have sinned is that past, present, or future tense. No, where does the Bible say that? Where does the Bible say that? That we all sin every day. See, for you to say that, young man, you have to either be God or God has to tell you that. And God hasn't told you that. No, I, I never said I was God. Didn't say I was Jesus either. No, that's not true. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9, you, you don't listen, young man. You open your mouth too much. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9. Hey, listen, if you want to sin every day and go to hell, go ahead. You want to sin every single day and go to hell, then go ahead, you hypocrite. But not me. Not me. I'm not going to do that. I love my God. I'm not going to spurn him and offend him and grieve him every single day, you hypocrite. You're on your way to hell. You're a fake. You're a false Christian. Well, come back and prove it, sinner. Come back and prove it, sinner. You're not going to use God's holy word inspired by the Holy Spirit, written down by holy men of old to support unholiness. You're a walking contradiction, young man. God commands you to be holy. He commands you to be perfect. In Matthew 5, 48. And there's people in the Bible who are called perfect and holy. Job, Noah, the parents of John the Baptist, David. These are called holy men. They weren't called wicked men. Yeah, so all have sinned, past tense, and come sure of the glory of God. But no one has to sin. You don't have to continue to be a sinner. And every time you have sinned, and every time you will sin, if you continue to sin, it's your fault. Not God's fault, not your parents' fault, not Adam and Eve's fault, not the world's fault. It's your fault. And that's why God holds you accountable for it. If you couldn't help but to sin, God would be unjust in punishing you for it. But God is just. He is fair. He is good. And He punishes sinners because they could have done otherwise every single time. In the Scriptures in 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says this, No, tempta no temptation is overtaking you except such as is common to man. 
and God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you're able, but with the temptation will also make the way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So when you're tempted, it's not too much for you to handle. And God provides a way out. And the Bible says you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you. So the problem when a sinner sins is not God, not the way they're born, not the world around them. It's the sinner's problem. Do you know if we didn't have sinners, there'd be no sin? If people didn't choose to sin day in and day out, if people didn't choose to be sinners, there'd be no sin. If there were no sin, this world would be a much better place. There'd be no locks on cars, no alarm system, no policemen, not needed, no jail cells, no STDs, no pregnancy outside of wedlock, no murderers, no death penalty needed, just kindness and love and selflessness because there'd be no sin because there's no sinners. So if you are a sinner, you're not a part of the solution, you're a part of the problem. If you're a sinner, you're not helping at all. You're just making matters worse. But listen, if you'd stop being a sinner, if you actually obey God, and Jesus Christ commands you to go and sin no more, you'd make this world a better place. And I don't know about you, but I like to make this world a better place. It's a pretty wicked, filthy world if you ask me. Where millions and millions of babies are murdered every year in their mother's womb. Can't defend themselves, can't help themselves. The place they should be the safest in all the universe in their mother's womb, and they're not safe. People chop their heads off, suck their brains out, chuck, uh, chop their body parts off and take them out piece by piece. That's right. It's disgusting. It's filthy in God's eyes. God hates it. Yes, people who engage in abortion will go to hell if they don't repent. That's correct. It's called murder. And it's the worst kind of murder. It's the shedding of innocent blood. And the Bible says that God hates those, the hands that shed innocent blood. That's what the scriptures say. But God can even save those who've had an abortion. God can even save those who have uh, performed abortion to other people. His mercy is not so small. His forgiveness and pardon offered is not so little. His grace is deep and wide. And he can save you from all sins. The Apostle Paul, because he persecuted the church of God, called himself the chief of sinners. And God saved him, transformed him, changed him, and made him into the apostle to the Gentiles. Why? And he wrote over half the New Testament. Why? Yeah. To show his grace and mercy, to show how kind he is, how long-suffering he is. Why? Because he... Why? He loves us? Yeah, because he cares for you. Well, I, I don't think you understand what the Bible says about that. God loves sinners unconditionally in this way, that he sent his son, Jesus Christ, to die for you on the cross, that you might be saved. He wants all to be saved for none to perish. He doesn't want you to die and your sins to go to hell. He wants to give you life. He wants to give what you don't deserve, which is grace and mercy and kindness. But he has a holy hatred for sinners because of the way they live their life, what the scriptures say. God does not cast sin into hell. He casts sinners into hell. Yeah, so he wants you to be saved, but as long as you live an ungodly, wicked life, God has distaste for you. He has an abhorrence for you. But he wants to be your friend. But right now, as a sinner, you're his enemy. But you can be the friend of God starting today if you'll forsake all of your sins and follow Jesus Christ. He has only good intentions towards you. The devil hates you, but Jesus Christ loves you. You know, when it comes to sinners... There's a love-hate relationship with, with, with God. God loves them. They hate Him. Sinners show their hatred for God by their sin day in and day out. But God shows His love towards them by long-suffering, by kindness, by patience, by not giving them what they deserve on the spot. He lets them to continue to live in the hope that they might repent, might come to their senses and get right with God. When it comes to... Uh, the relationship sinners have with the devil, it's uh, a love-hate relationship as well. Sinners love the devil, but he hates them. The devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And many of you uh, are, are glad to participate in allowing him to destroy your life. 
you give into them every single day by looking at pornography, by getting drunk, by smoking weed, by lying. Well, there's one right there, a child of the devil right there, smokes weed. You, you're engaging in mockery of the scriptures. Maybe you're a homosexual. All these things are wicked. All these things are against God. And all these things are for the devil. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 10, it says, In this the children of God and the children of the devil are manifest. Whoever does not practice righteousness is not of God, nor is he who does not love his brother. So if you don't practice righteousness, you're not of God. You're of the devil. You're a child of the devil, according to the scriptures. But the Bible says, if you abide in Christ, you will not sin. Little children, let no one deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. See, the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Who does he come to destroy? You. God's creation. Those made in God's image. But Jesus Christ also has a ministry of destruction. He comes to destroy that which destroys you. He comes to destroy sin. Jesus Christ comes to destroy that which would want to destroy you, the devil and sin. So he wants to destroy the thing that destroys you. That's an act of love towards you. It's like trying to disarm a bomb before it blows up and kills thousands of innocent people. God wants to destroy the works of the devil in your life. But you must submit your life to him. You must use your free will properly. You must give in to the conviction of the Holy Spirit and surrender all of your life to Jesus Christ, who is the way that comes to the Father but by Him. There's no other name given under heaven by which we must be saved except for Jesus Christ. The Bible says this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior who desires all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. For there is one God and there is one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus, who gave himself a ransom for all to be testified in due time. So Christ laid down his life for you for sinners, that he might deliver you, ransom you from your sin. And Christ is mighty to save. The Bible says, he that commits sin is a slave to sin, and a slave will not abide in God's house forever. But a son, a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son sets you free, you shall be free indeed. Christ wants to set you free from your sinning, set you free from your drunkenness and your pot smoking and your lust and porn watching and your sex outside of marriage. He wants to set you free from all of your sin. And let's face it, your sin may be pleasurable for a season, but it only brings you misery in the end. The shame and guilt of your sin, the condemnation of your sin, that will end up sending you to hell in the end. The Bible says, knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves of sin, for he who has died has been freed from sin. Yes, Christ can set you free by his death, burial, and resurrection. The same power that rose Christ in the grave can raise your dead spirit from the grave and give you life. For if you're still a sinner, you're dead and your trespasses and your sins. But Christ came to give you life. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ came to give you life. 
He doesn't want you to die in your sins. He doesn't want you to go to hell for your sins. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God did not come into the world to condemn the world, but the world through him might be saved. He who believes in him is not condemned. He who does not believe is condemned already because he does not believe in the name of the only begotten Son of God. Yes. So if you're not a follower of Christ, right now in your current state, you stand condemned before God. For God's will towards you is that you might be saved, that you might have life, that you might receive the kindness and mercy of God. The Bible says, or do you despise the riches of his goodness, kindness, and forbearance, not knowing that the goodness of God leads you to repentance, but in accordance with your hardness and your unrepentant heart, you are treasuring up for yourself wrath in the day of wrath and the revelation of the righteous judgment of God, who will render to each one according to his deeds. Eternal life to those who by patient continuance in doing good seek for glory, honor, and immortality. But to those who are self-seeking and do not obey the truth, but obey unrighteousness, indignation and wrath, tribulation and anguish on every soul of man is evil. So the scripture says about sinners. What's considered self-righteous? Someone who makes their own standard of what is right, seeks to keep it, and seeks to have others keep it. That's self-righteousness. But self-righteousness is not obeying God. That's what God expects you to do. That's what God wants you to do. And if you don't do that, God will give you what you deserve in the end for your sin. What's considered not obeying God? <laughs> Young man, do you, do you take English classes here? You know what the word obey means? Yeah, you're just a mocker. I'm not going to spend any more time with you. You're a mocker. You know what obey means. Yeah, obeying God is keeping his commandments. He says don't be a liar. You shouldn't be a liar. You should be honest. He says not to have sex outside of marriage, you shouldn't do it. What about suicide? Well, suicide is self-murder. You shouldn't do that either. Is that a commandment or not? Thou shalt not murder. Are you sure that wasn't said about by, upon by like, the Catholic Church during the Crusade era? I have the scriptures, young man. Uh, how do you know those were tampered with? Because I have the manuscripts as well. Oh, okay. Yeah. Is that what saves the dead sea scrolls also? Yes, it is. Are you positive about that? Sure am. Okay, well, why don't you give me the references, bud, to show me I'm wrong, smarty pants, Mr. Mr. Bible scholar. You're, you're, just, you're just a normal Bible mocker. You're probably reading too much of Richard Dawkins and uh, the former atheist Christopher Hitchens. You're probably reading too much of their stuff, maybe Sam Harris. You're just a mocker is all you are. You don't know anything about the Bible or about history. Most of you engage in uh, historical revisionism when it comes to the scriptures. The problem with God's Word is not the things that are difficult to understand at times, but the things that are very easy to understand. Because people like this sinner right here don't want to follow God's Word. See, the difficult part is not knowing God exists, or knowing what His Word says, or knowing His Word is really accurate, reliable, and trustworthy. The difficult part is whether you're actually going to do it or not. And must face it, most of you sinners don't want to obey God's word. You want to live the way you want to live. You want to be the God of your life. You don't want God to rule over you. So the Bible says, the fool shall say in his heart, there is no God. Fools say there is no God. Not wise people, not smart people. Fools say there is no God. <laughs> Scripture says, they suppress the truth in unrighteousness. Yes, people have plenty of truth, all the truth they need to submit themselves to God, and they refuse to do so, not because they lack truth or lack understanding, 
but because they want to be unrighteous. They want to be sinners. Yeah, well, potty mouths will have their part in Lake of Fire as well. The Bible says you shall know their, their heart by what comes out of their mouth. And so when you have filthy words come out of your mouth, you show you have a filthy heart. You know, you get your heart cleansed by God. He can cleanse your heart. You know, I used to be a potty mouth. I mean, just about every other word out of my mouth used to be a cuss word. But Christ changed me. And now I have a clean mouth. My mouth is full of God's word and the scripture instead of full of obscenities and profanities and curse words. And so God has mercy available even for the person who has profanity come out of their mouth left and right. How do I know this? Because I used to be just like that. God has mercy available for the drunkard. How do I know that? Because I used to be a drunkard. God has mercy available for the fornicator. How do I know that? I used to be a fornicator and God had mercy upon me. God has mercy available for the porn watcher. How do I know that? That used to be me. But now I don't do that anymore. Now I follow Jesus Christ. God has mercy available for the liar and the cheat and the covetous person. How do I know that? I used to be those things. God has mercy available for the homosexual. How do I know that? Not because I was one, but because the Bible says so. And I've seen homosexuals get straightened out by God and begin to live a life that's pleasing to him. But if you're still a sodomite, you're still a lesbian, you're still a drunkard or a pot smoker, you currently do not have the mercy of God. You need to forsake those things to receive God's mercy. The Bible says, seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his ways and the unrighteous man his thoughts. Let him return to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God for he will abundantly pardon. I wonder how many of you students before you started coming to Volunteer State ask God, God do you want me to go to Vol State? God what do you want my major to be? Because if you haven't done that then you're running your life not God. See, that's the problem. People want to run their own life. And if you haven't submitted the simple things like where do you want me to go to school? What do you want me to study? What do you want my job to be? If you haven't submitted those simple things to God, then you haven't submitted your life to God, that's for sure. You know, so who's, who's really running your life right now? If you're running your life, I hate to tell you this, you're disqualified. You're not smart enough to run your life. But God is. God is omniscient. He's all-knowing. God is omnipotent. He's all-powerful. But you're not qualified to run your life. And it was never meant to be that way. God is qualified to run your life, though. And he'll run it right. He won't run into the ground. He won't run you into to sin. He won't drag you down. He will run it right. He'll give you true life. Jesus Christ said, the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy, but I came to give them life and life abundantly. What a terrible waste of life to, to run your own life to do it the way you think you should do it. The Bible says, do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It'll be health to your flesh and strength to your bones. See, many of you college students, you come to college, you think you're a know-it-all. You're 18 years old. You probably haven't read very many books in your life. You get all your information off the internet for the most part, and you think you know everything. Well, I'm here to tell you, you're wise in your own eyes. You want true wisdom? The Bible says the beginning of wisdom is the fear of God. Fearing God is the beginning of wisdom. Not taking a couple of classes at Vol State is the beginning of wisdom, but fearing God is the beginning of wisdom. And if you fear God, you will depart from iniquity. Well, how many of you are still living in sin? Well, then you don't fear God. You're currently on your way to hell. You need to repent. You're not wise. You may be wise in your own eyes, but you're not wise and true. In truth, you're not wise. The Bible says, fear God and keep his commandments, for this is man's all. For God will bring every work into judgment, including every secret thing, whether good 
or evil. You see, you may have sins that you're so ashamed of, you won't do them in public, your friends don't know about it, your parents don't know about it, no one knows about these secret sins that are you and God. But the Bible says you'll bring your secret sins into judgment as well. So you better get right with God while you still have time. Eating fish isn't a sin, young lady. The Bible never says so. Well, give me the Bible verse that then. You, your students don't... I mean, how many here have actually read the Bible for themselves all the way through? Well, it hasn't helped you one bit, young man, your potty mouth. It hasn't helped you one bit. Yeah, so that's the problem. Most of you haven't even read the Bible one time. I'm on a Bible reading plan right now to read through the whole Bible in 90 days. And it hasn't been that difficult, to be honest. So what excuse do you have to be quoting things that are supposedly found in the Bible but can't tell me where they're found and you haven't read the Bible all the way through? You'll read books here at this school. You'll study for your test. To get a letter grade, you'll forget about a few months later. But you won't study God's Word which will judge you on Judgment Day? That's ridiculous. It's not wise. The Bible says about itself that the grass, the grass withers, the flowers fade, but the Word of God endures forever. The Word of God will judge you. If you have five copies at home collecting dust, you better dust one off and start reading it. And start believing it. And start obeying it. The Bible says... And James 2, verse 19, you believe there is one God, you do well. Even demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O oh foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Many of you say you believe in God. You may even have a Bible at your, in your book bag, but you don't actually obey God. You don't bring forth works proving your belief. Demons believe in God. They're not going to be in this kingdom. They're going to be suffering in the lake of fire, like the rest of the sinners. But if you truly know God, if you truly believe in God like you ought to, you'll bring forth works, fruit of repentance. Jesus Christ said, either make the tree good and its fruit good, or else make the tree bad and its fruit bad, for a tree is known by its fruit. Brood of vipers, how can you? Being evil, speak good things. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. A good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, brings forth good things. An evil man, out of the evil treasure, evil things. But I say unto you, that for every idle word men may speak, they'll give account of it in the day of judgment. For by your words you will be justified, and by your words you shall be condemned. The words of Jesus Christ in Matthew 12, 33 through 37. Many of you just let whatever word that comes first to your mind just fall out of your mouth like it's no big deal. It is a big deal. God's going to judge you according to your word. And when you blaspheme God's name and allow filthy words to pour out of your mouth like water over Niagara Falls, you show you have a filthy, wicked heart. You need to be changed by God. God can change you. He can give you a new heart and new desires. How do I know? He did it to me. He changed me. A long time ago, almost half my life ago now, Christ changed me. He delivered me from my sins. He set my feet upon the rock. And now I live a new way. As the old song says, what can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other fount I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. This power in the blood of Jesus Christ to transform a sinner into a saint, to take a drunkard and make him sober, 
Take the fornicator and make him pure. Take the liar and make him honest. Take the sodomite and straighten them out. There's power in the name of Jesus Christ. It's a name that, of course, most people blaspheme all throughout their day. It's the very name by which you could be saved. And it's the only name you can be saved by. The name of Jesus Christ. Yet why is his name on your lips as a cuss word? Why is the name of Jesus Christ on your lips like you despise him? What has he done wrong to you that you'll despise him in such a way? What would you think of someone who used your name as a cuss word to express the disgust of their heart? The only mockers say those things. I'm mocking. I'm preaching God's word. Your God doesn't exist. Your God's a figment of your imagination. There's only one God. There's only one God. The God of the Bible. You got plenty of, I don't prove you anything to you. You got plenty of proof. All the proof you need, young man. Yeah, okay. Yeah, anyone can write the Bible. Try again. Try, try it was written over 2,000 years by over 40 authors, and there's no disagreement among them. From three different continents, all different walks of life, and there's no disagreement among them. Try that. Try doing that. Try finding two people who are from the same town, the same upbringing, agree on anything. But Jesus Christ came to save sinners. The Bible said just the right time, in due time, when you're still without strength, Christ died for the ungodly. For scarcely for a righteous man will one die, yet perhaps for a good man, Someone would even dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for sinners. Christ died for the ungodly, but not to leave you ungodly, not to leave you as a sinner, but to change you, to transform you, to deliver you from all of your sin. Dude, what's in the bag? My name's not dude. Well, I don't give a shit what your name is. Well, what's you can walk bag? away then, sinner. None your business. I said it's a dildo. You're perverted. You're a pervert. I bet you like taking it up the ass. You're a pervert. You're a pervert. It's on the weekends, though. Yep. Shows you how defiled you are, young lady. I'd rather be defiled, isn't it? Well, that's obvious. That's obvious. That much is obvious. Shows you how perverted your minds are when all you can think about is depraved sexual acts and talk about it in public. You know, just 20 years ago, people would be ashamed of doing, even doing something in private or talking about it or thinking about it, and now you talk about it in public. Like it's no big deal. Shows you how depraved you are, how astray you are, how corrupted you are. But the Bible says he was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement for our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Amen. All we like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity of us all. Yeah, so even your perversion, your depravity, your corruption, even the most vile things you say and do, God can deliver you from those things too. He can forgive you, he can deliver you, but you must give up your sin. You can't have your sin and have Jesus. You can't serve two masters. You're either going to hate the one and love the other, or else be loyal to the one and despise the other. You can't serve God in sin. And the Bible says, he who sins the slave to sin. And the slave will not abide in God's house forever. Yes. You can ask a question if you'd like. Okay, well, just give me a few more minutes and I'll let you do that, okay? Yeah, so the Bible says, wash yourselves, make yourselves clean. Put away the evil of your doings from before my eyes. Cease to do evil, learn to do good. Come now and let us reason together, says the Lord. Though your sins are like scarlet, they shall be as white as snow. 
Though they are red like crimson, they shall be as wool, if you are willing and obedient. See, the stain of sin upon your life is deep. It's large. And you can't get it out by any human effort. Only the shed blood of Jesus Christ can remove the stain of sin. Only Jesus Christ in his death, burial, and resurrection can remove the stain of your sin. And he's willing. He's able and he's willing. But the problem is most sinners aren't willing to humble themselves. They're not willing to come to him and hear from him and obey him and do what he tells them to do. Oh, if, you, if that's you, go seek after God and say, God, make me willing. I want to be saved. I don't want to die in my sins and go to hell. Go seek God. Because if you seek for him with all your heart, you, he shall be found by you. God is not willing that any should perish. He wants you to come to life. But if you continue in your sins, he'll give you what you deserve in the end. I don't care what you guys believe in. Laughing at him. Why the heck are you laughing at him and not laughing at all? I mean, you guys want to promote tolerance and diversity. But you can't be Telling you the truth about yourself is not talking down to you. In Christ, I am perfect, yes. No, I don't sin every day. It, listen, listen, if you sin every day, you're a child of the devil, not me. Listen, if you sin every day, I'm nothing like you. If you sin every day, I'm nothing like you. Everybody sins every day, regardless if they believe in Not true, not true. No, it isn't. The Bible never says that. I don't have a problem with you seeing this side of my sign. I'm not ashamed of that part of my sign. Come read it for you. What's that? I don't have a problem with happy people. Well, actually, actually, homeless are not happy. They're miserable. No, they're not happy. That's why they die at the average age of 42. They cut 30 years off their life. That's miserable. Well, that's, that's, that's what you say. That's not what God says. Yeah, I'm sure about it. Yeah, lady, how, long have you, how long have you supposedly been a Christian, lady? Okay, so, so listen, I've been a Christian for over 18 years now, almost 19 years. Right, well, how are you expressing it by coming against God's word being preached? How are you expressing your faith? In a good way or a bad way? When the world when the world sides with you and you agree with them. <laughs> well, any, any agreement at all is not agreement with God. Either for him or against him. Either you either gather with him or scatter abroad. Yeah, so if you if you if you sin every day, you're not a Christian. That's not true. There is true. Yeah. God commands you to God commands you to go and sin no more. God commands you to stop sinning. Yes, yes, you can. The Bible, the, 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 well, you're, you don't agree with God's word, young lady. God commands you. John 5, 14, John 8, 11, Matthew 5, 48, uh, Colossians chapter 1, 27, 29, 1 John 2, 3 through 4, 1 John 1, 5 through 7, 1 John 5, 3 through 4, 1 John 3, 7 through 8. Where, where do you want me to start, young lady? The Bible tells you to stop sinning. And if you're still sinning, it's your fault. Nobody else's fault but yours. And you ought to stop it. No, you don't have sinful natures. If you have a sinful nature, you don't have the divine nature. And when someone becomes born again, they have the divine nature, not a sinful nature. The Holy Spirit. No, actually, it does mean that. And if you haven't stopped sinning completely, you're not a Christian. It's really that simple. Yeah. God commands you to stop it. Okay, okay, well, for all of you sin excusers, tell me one sin you can't stop doing. I got to hear about this. No, you can stop lying. You stop smoking weed. I know people who have stopped lying who have stopped smoking weed. 
You see, see, the problem is not you can't, the problem is you won't. That's your problem. You don't want to stop. You could stop, but you don't want to stop. That's the problem. You're a pervert. You're a pervert. Listen, listen. If you if you want to engage in sexual activity, God has a solution to that. It's called getting married. That's the solution. They're idolaters. They're idolaters. They don't follow Jesus Christ. Man, you it, you must be really a dumbing down in public schools these days. You don't know what an idolater is? No, I say a dumbing down. Well, you're you're acting it. Yeah, so it's, it's someone who engages in idolatry. An idolater is someone who engages in idolatry. Listen, having a Bible does not make you a Christian. Oh, so how do you know if you're a Christian if you got a Bible? How do I know I'm a Christian? Because I obey God. Because I follow Jesus Christ. Yeah, so says the 18 year old. Yeah, so you sinners need to stop your sinning. Forsake all your sinning. Trust in Jesus Christ. What color is Jesus Christ? He's a Middle Eastern color. He's like olive skin. Well, he's 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 like olive skin color. He's a, he was a Jew. He was a Jew. Listen, there there were there are no paintings of Jesus Christ. There were no smartphones back in Jesus' day. There's no pictures of him. But he was a Jew. From the Middle East, so he's he's olive skin. Not all Jews. The ones that don't trust in their Messiah, Yeshua. No, all the early Christians. Yeah, you're you guys are really ignorant. The the early. The early Christians were Jewish, you know that, right? Peter, Christian. Peter was a Jew, he was a Christian, right? John, Mark. All these people were Jewish people who followed Jesus Christ. Jesus was a Jew himself. Jesus preached to Jewish people. So that they came to the Jewish people first. The book of Acts, the first part is talking about in Jerusalem. So, I mean, to say you don't understand these things is ridiculous. Ignorant. Vote for Bernie Sanders for president? Never. <laughs> Never, why not? Because he's actually a socialist Jew. What does that mean? Socialism is just another, uh, socialism is another term for lying, for, for stealing. Yes. Socialism is stealing from people. That's all that is. But I don't vote at all. I don't get involved in politics. My king is Jesus Christ, and I'm waiting for him to return. And he will stomp out the grace of wrath. He will destroy all authority and principality and power. First John 1.18. If we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. That's actually First John 1.8, not 18. Yeah, it's obvious. It's obvious. And First John 1, 5 through 7, why don't you read that? You won't read in verses 5 through 7, will you? This is the message we heard from him and declare unto you, that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. If we claim to have fellowship with him and walk in darkness, we lie and do not practice the truth. But if we walk in the light as he's in the light, then we have fellowship with one another and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. 1 John chapter 2 and verse 1, right after the two verses after that one, 1 John 2, 1. My little children, these things I write to that you may not sin. 1 John 2, 3 through 4. Now by this we know that we know him, if we keep his commandments. He who says I know him and does not keep his commandments is a liar, and the truth is not in him. So tell me again you can be a sinner and follow God. Tell me again you can be a sinner and know God. Tell me you can be a sinner and have fellowship with God. Not possible. Impossible. God is holy. Well, no, you don't have to sin. Well, you need to stop it. You need to stop sinning. Yeah, really, you need to stop it. Yeah.
Yeah, we'll stop it off. Stop it off. Stop it off. Stop it off. Stop all your sinning. No matter what the sin is, stop it off. I'm just being relevant. I'm just being relevant to my crowd. Well, I never called anybody a dummy. I said public school is dumbing down the youth, is what I said. And they call anyone a dummy, and it's, it's true. Well, you know what the word obey means? No, they understand just fine. They're willfully ignorant. It's the difference, yes. That's what the Bible says. That's what the Bible says. They're willfully ignorant. The Bible says that a fool shall say in his heart, there is no God. Oh, now you're now now it's the, the now you're being a hypocrite. 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 Because I shouldn't call people ignorant, but you call me ignorant. Yeah. Yeah. Well, telling someone to stop sinning is not false. That's God's word. That's what God expects you to do. That's what God tells you to do. If you want to keep on sinning, you can't have God. Can't have God and be a sinner at the same time. Are you judging my judgment? Are you judging my judgment? Says who? Where? Go get it. I gotta see this. I've been doing this for years. I've never seen that verse yet. People like you quote that verse all the time, and you can't tell me where it's located at. You can't tell me where it says only God can judge people because it's not in there. Not in there. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2.15, the spiritual man judges all things, and he himself is rightly judged by no man. No, that's not true. John 7.24, Jesus Christ said, when you judge, judge with righteous judgment. Talking to humans. New King James Version. Romans 3.23 is what you just said, not Romans 3.24. Well, it doesn't say only God can judge. It says all have sinned and come to the glory of God. The Bible never says that either. Well, there's a whole book in the Bible called Judges where God appointed men to judge other men. A whole book in the Bible. A whole book in the Bible where God appointed men to judge other men. But I thought men couldn't judge righteously. I thought men couldn't judge righteously. Why was God appointing men to judge other men if they can't do it the right way? So, so, so when the Bible said that it's wrong, God was wrong for doing that? Was God ignorant? Was God a fool for appointing men to judge other men? Okay, so there can be men who can judge other men. What about 1 Corinthians chapter 6 and verse 2, which says the saints will judge the world. Christians will judge the world in righteousness. That's what the Bible says. 1 Corinthians 6, 2. Are you preaching Yes, I am. 1 Corinthians 6, 2 says the saints will judge the world. Yeah. Well, judgment is love. Wait a minute. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Judgment is not the absence of love. When a judge in... Uh, what, what county is this? Gallatin. What county is this? When a, when a judge in Sumner County judges someone as guilty and sends them to jail, they're not being unloving. They're not being unloving. And for me to preach judgment is not me I'm being unloving. Jesus Christ preached judgment all the time. He wasn't unloving. And that's what I'm doing. I'm being loving by preaching judgment. Well, then Jesus was unloving. John the Baptist was unloving. Well, then why did he preach judgment? Why did he preach judgment? Where does the Bible say that? Anyone. Where does the you Bible say that? You, you know what? You know what I think? You You're a sinner who hates God's judgment. That's your problem. That's what I think. No, you're not saved. You're still a filthy sinner. You're not saved. If you're still a filthy sinner, you're not saved. If you're still a filthy sinner, you're not saved from anything. God cleans those who are filthy. That leaves them filthy. Now the Bible says, Jesus Christ said, be perfect, your heavenly Father is perfect. Why won't you be perfect? Why won't you be perfect then? 
It says try to be perfect. No, it doesn't say try. It says be. It says be. You know why you're so mad? Because you know you're a sinner. You're deserving of hell. And you won't repent. No, I'm not a sinner. I'm a saint of God. I'm a Christian. You are being rude. And love is not rude. No, the Bible doesn't say that. That's a false, that's a proverb from like India or something like that. The Bible never says that. No, it isn't. Where does the Bible say that? Give me the Bible over to that. The Bible didn't say that. Okay. It was a, it's something that's just known. It disagrees with the Bible though. Okay, so, so, so in Matthew 23, when Jesus Christ said, you brood of vipers, you make people twice the sons of hell, you, you, you're full of dead man's bones. Was he attracting more with honey than vinegar there? No, he wasn't, was he? So I dismiss your proverb that's not found upon the Bible, not based upon the scripture. Listen, you're, how can you bring anyone to Christ and you're still filthy yourself? How can you bring anyone to Christ? You're still filthy yourself. And you are showing no love. That's what you said. You said it a few minutes ago. You're still filthy. You still sin every day. No, we're not perfect. Do you sin every day? Do you sin every day? Listen, it's not bumper sticker theology. We're talking about God's word now, not bumper stickers. The Bible never says, I'm not perfect, I'm just forgiven. In Colossians chapter 1 and verse 27, the Apostle Paul says, Christ in you, the hope of glory, him we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ. Wait a minute now. The Apostle Paul is laboring and preaching the word of God and teaching it to present every man perfect in Christ as impossible? No, you don't. No, you don't. No, well, that's your problem. So you think love's a feeling. Love is not a feeling, young lady. No, love is not just kindness. The Bible, Revelation 319, Jesus Christ says, as many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. That's my love. I'm rebuking you. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Did Jesus Christ love them while he was rebuking them and chasing them? Was he loving them? Yeah, Revelation 3.19. As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. Love is not a feeling. Love is not a warm, fuzzy feeling. Love is not a hug or a kiss. Love is wanting the greatest good for somebody. And what you're getting today, I know you, most of you probably never experienced this before. It's called tough love. You're getting what you need. Anything, man. I love everybody here. I'm like you, brother. You don't love anybody here. You don't tell them the truth. Oh, because look, you, you pounded him and gave him a hug and told me you love him. That means you love him, right? I do love this guy, man. Says who? How? How do you know? Not all these people. How? There's no good How? Comes from this square. How? This is the asshole square, man. Well, I expect that from a sinner. It's a compliment from you. I wasn't even good. Me a sinner, but you're a sinner. I'm not a sinner. You're not a sinner. Nope. Oh, this guy's not a sinner, guys. Oh, Lord, to I know. This is Jesus Christ Himself. No, no. I have sinned. Sin. I've sinned before, so I can't. Anymore. So I can't be Jesus, because Jesus has never sinned. You don't sin How long That's right. I obey God. Oh, okay. How long? I obey God. How long you, you know, you know why it's so astonishing to you sinners why I'm not sinning? Why? Because you can't imagine going a second without your sin. That's your problem. You, you couldn't imagine going a minute without your sin. A day without your sin. That's why it's so astonishing to you that I'm living above sin. Because you can't imagine one day without your sin, sinner. What's your sin? Porn watching? Porn watching? Is that what it is? What it? There you go. That's what it is. There's the idolater right there. He loves his weed too much. Doesn't love Jesus. He'd rather smoke his reefer than love Jesus. You don't put off any love. You're a, you're a sin-loving God hater. You don't love anyone. You don't love yourself. You don't even love yourself. You don't even love yourself. You don't even love yourself. I don't love myself. No, you don't love yourself. Because you keep sinning. It's obvious you don't love yourself because you keep sinning. No, the problem is you. Sinners. That's the problem. Sinners like you. That's the problem. Listen, if there were no sinners in this world, there'd be no sin. It'd be a lot better place. For example, man, earlier you were talking about Paul. Do you know who Paul was, man? Paul was Saul, who killed people for a living, man. And he was first Did he keep on doing it? First, no, but he Oh, so he stopped it! He stopped it! What do you know? He stopped killing people! He still sinned, man. He Says who? Where? Where does it say that? Where does it say that? Where does it say he kept on sinning? Show me the verse that says after after Saul became Paul, he was spiritually perfect. No, because he's not, man. We are not Jesus. Uh, we are yeah. human beings. You're, you know, let, me, let me explain to you a couple things here, man. First of all, Jesus has never sinned. 
No one's claiming to be Jesus. No one's saying Paul's Jesus or that I'm Jesus. Jesus has never sinned. I've sinned at some point in time, so I couldn't possibly you don't be... Anymore. You don't right. Sin yes. That's right. right. I stopped sinning. Which is astonishing you because you can't help but stop sinning, right? Right? You can't help it, right? Is that why? Could you, could you stop smoking weed if you wanted to? Yeah, I can stop smoking weed. There you go. We had one sinner who admitted it. He could stop his sinning if he wanted to. See, you just admitted the truth. You could stop smoking weed if you wanted to. See, that problem is not whether I can or not, or whether you can or not. You won't, and I will. And you won't, and I will. And you won't, and I will. That's the problem. You won't, and I will. You will? Yeah. You are talking down to me about No, no, I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth because I care for you. How do you know the truth? How do you know the infinite knowledge? You don't I know Jesus Christ, people, and Jesus Christ said, I am the truth. Look, man, look you at your sign, shit. brother. Hey, you are talking second. down to I'm all of these people. No, no, I'm telling the truth. You said warning, hell waits for all of these Right, that's true. That's love, man. Says who? That's what the Bible says. Is God love? Yes, God is love. That's what God says. God doesn't say any of that. Yeah, he Jesus does. Said, look, Jesus would go to sinners and he would say, look, here's the way. You are welcome to come with me, but if you do not want to, that is okay. Give I'm me the Bible verse for that. I'm here when you Give me the Bible verse for that. Give me the Bible verse for that. Give me that story even in, in the Bible. Jesus did it through love, man. Jesus. It's not found. It's not found. You're a biblically ignorant. You're biblically ignorant, young man. You, you, you put on a farce like you're a Bible scholar, but you're not. Admit it. Admit, you're not a Bible scholar. You don't know the Bible. Have you even read the whole thing all the way through? You haven't, have you? You haven't, have you? Admit that you're the Antichrist. No, the Antichrist would tell you to keep on sinning. Look, man, what I'm God tells you to stop sinning. Actually, as a matter of fact, the Antichrist is better than your bitch. Actually, the Antichrist would want you to feel bad about sinning. You know, every satanic commandment of the Necromaton says that what you're doing is sinful. Oh, my God, you're sinning. The whole, the whole of Satanism is, is, is the, the one law in Satanism is, uh, do what thou wilt shall be the whole of the law. That's the, that's the rule of Satan, the church of Satan. And so that, that's what most of you do. You, most, of you, most of you are Satanists. You do whatever you want to do. Huh? What I've heard come out of your mouth tells me a lot about you, young man. I am just like my God. I'm very judgmental. Just like my God. Just, just like my God. I'm very judgmental. You are not just like God. You're just like all of us. Well, not like your God. Because your God doesn't exist. Your God's the devil. Who but I'm a, I'm a, my God doesn't exist, but yours does. Because my God. How do you know my God isn't your God because there is one God. It couldn't possibly because the way you're describing it is not my God. You're talking down to all of us. I can say this. You're talking down to me. Stop talking down to me. I'm going to cry in the corner now. You're talking down to all of us. Come on, man. Get a spine, man. Get a spine. You're talking to me to get a spine, man. Are you telling me to get a spine? Where's the love, man? Where's the love? I got a spine, man. Step on the Whoa. He's white. Don't touch him. He's white. Don't touch him. He's white. Where's the He'll love, man? Jail. Where's your love? Get into my face. My love's right here, man. Where's you your love? love? You don't have any love for anybody. Hi, my name's Officer Portig. Let's step out of the box. This is his box. Like you the box. So, so let me get this right. I say some words and you throw a fit like you're a little child. But then you want to beat me up, right? Then you want to beat me up, right? Because he's loving. He's loving right here. That's loving. He wants to get physically violent. That's loving. When I tell you the truth about yourself, you throw a fit like a little child, like a little baby. You don't have a spine. You don't have a spine. You can't even think little words. You would act like a little baby going to cry in a corner. Yep. All right, so you, you believe in, in the Bible where it says, thou, thou, who out, thou who without sin can cast the first stone. Why are you telling everybody that doesn't? Matter? John chapter 8 and verse 7, an adulterous woman was brought before Jesus, the story you're talking about, was thrown at his feet. Now the law of Moses states that when an adulterer is caught in an act of adultery, listen, 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 this is the law of the Jewish people, that she will be stoned to death for her sins. Okay, so there's nothing wrong with that law. God established that law through Moses for the Jewish nation. So we're, Jesus is preaching to Jewish people, and she, was, she committed adultery, so she, according to the law, should be stoned to death. Nothing wrong with that. Hey, now, now, when, but, when, but when it came to, hold on a second, hold on a second. No, no, I'm not done, I'm not done, I'm not done. No, I'm not done, no, no, I'm not done. So God has no problem with, God has no problem with that, but she wasn't gonna be stoned with metaphorical word stones. Okay? She wasn't going to be stoned to death with metaphorical word stones. She's going to be stoned to death with literal, real stones that would kill her. Okay, so I don't have any stones in my hand. 
I'm not here to hurt anybody. Listen, if I was a violent person, I would have knocked him out a few minutes ago. Point blank. If I was a violent person, I would have fought him a few minutes ago. I'm not a violent person anymore. I used to be a violent person, but not anymore. I would never do that. So when it comes to uh, John 8, 7, most sinners like to use that and say, well, you're judging us. You're casting stones. That's not what it means. But, but what did Jesus Christ say to that woman, young man? What did he say to her? He said, go and sin no more, is what he said to her. The same message I had for you is the same message he had for her. Go and sin no more. That's what he told the woman caught in adultery in John 8, 11. Go and sin no more. Same message he had for her, I have for you. Jesus Christ wants you to go and sin no more. That's what you need to do. Don't tell me what to do, sinner. I don't follow your... your... Don't tell me what to do, right? Yeah, you don't tell me what to do. I do whatever I want to do. God commands all men everywhere to repent because it's coming a day in which he will judge the world in righteousness. Obviously, you're a Christian, so you're calling. You're, there's two people asking me questions at one time. I'm a Christian. What, I, I can't hear what he's saying when you're talking. I can't hear what he's saying. I think it's love, brother. What's what's your question, sir? Which religion are you talking about? I mean, which religion, sir? Religion, man. They're not all the same. Which religion, sir? They're not all the same. The Bible never says what you just said, sir. The Bible never says what you just said. That's a lie. That's a lie, sir. Never says that. Listen, listen. If let religions be, why won't you let me be? My religion says I preach the word of God. My listen, my religion says I preach this. But you're complaining about it. You're doing the very thing you're telling me not to do. It's just their belief. It's just my belief. Exactly. Then leave me alone. Then leave me alone. Why are you bothering me about my belief? That's what my Bible tells me to do. Really? All right. You have a self-defeating position, sir. You have a self-defeating position. You said, leave people alone with yours, and you're not leaving me alone with mine. But I'm not trying to push mine on you. You are. It's your religion. Really Don't do this is what you're pushing on me. I'm telling you I'm supposed to do this. I never told them what the cast stones. I told them what casting stones was, sir, and I'm not doing it. That's what the Bible says. That's what my religion says. That's what my religion says. But they read the same Bible, they don't interpret the same way you do. Well, they're wrong. Okay, let's 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 look at John 14, 6. Jesus Christ said, I am the way. I am I didn't I knew you'd walk away. God, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. Now tell me how to interpret it any other way except for what it actually says. The definite article, the way, the truth, the life, no one comes, that's how, how we interpret it. The way, the truth, the life, no one comes to the Father but by me. Tell me how you misinterpret that, sir. You know how you misinterpret it? You twist it to your own destruction. Prove it. Prove it. Prove it. You can't prove science. You can't prove science. You can't prove chemical science. No, you can't prove chemical science. You assume a lot of things to prove chemical science, sir. You use your five senses to engage in science. Now, how do you know they're working properly, your five senses? Because they're mathematical equations to get there. Yeah, but you use your, your senses to do that, sir. You use your five senses. You use your five senses to engage in science, and you can't prove to me that your five senses are working properly, sir. You can't do it, can you? You can't do it, can you? Can you prove to me that your five senses... That's proof right there. That's proof that God exists. If you're going to believe... Yeah, 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 it is. If you believe that your senses are working properly, you must have in the beginning God. Otherwise, you're just a walking... You don't know what, what truth is. What about it? Well, there is a Big Bang, but not the one you're talking about. Well, actually, if you look at your book, you read Adam and Eve, the first one Right? 
so we're all, every time we reproduce it, it's a... Incest? We all came from two people. Right. So if we came from two people, it's incest. So there's no one in your family married to someone going back to, from your family? So I'm telling you that. I'm telling you came from Sir, I think you have a problem with your definition of incest. Incest, according to scripture, is marrying your marrying your brother or your sister or marrying a close relative. Yeah, I'm obvious you're done. I don't think you had a starting place to begin with in the first place. But when it comes to science, when it comes to science, your five senses must be working properly. But when you can't prove they're working properly, you assume a lot of things. You assume those things. The only way you can know for sure that your senses are working properly is if God in the beginning created them. An intelligent being created your five senses. Otherwise, you can't know for sure what you're seeing is actually what you're seeing. Hey, man. You go back to church and show them this footage of you sharing all this love with us, and they give you more money to come pay here to do this? First of all, I don't get paid to come here and do this. I use my own money to come here and do this. I take time from my own work to come here and do this. No one pays me to do this. Yeah. You didn't answer my question. You go show your church this footage. Well, this will be on YouTube so the whole world can see it. I'd like you to go show your footage. The whole world will see it. The whole world will see your depravity. The whole world will see your hypocritical love. They already were away, and they don't love anybody. They don't love them. If they're sinners, they don't love themselves. They don't love others. They don't love God. I'll, I'll gladly push them away from your God. Your God doesn't exist. Uh, it's called. It's just a public campus. This is public property. It's freedom of press. If you don't like it, walk away. You don't have to have. I don't have to have you personally videotape you. Refining Fire Fellowship. Yeah. You're a liar. Yeah. So for your senses to work properly, for you to even engage in science at all. There must be in the beginning God. So when someone says, well, religion's wrong, science is right, uh, they can't prove that, first of all. And secondly, they have to engage in science using their five senses to see, to taste, to touch, to smell, to hear, uh, to observe, reproduce, and test, requires reliable and trustworthy five senses. But if there is no in the beginning God, you have no reason to trust that they're reliable and uh, working properly. So you have to become an infinite skeptic instead of actual... Uh, science. Well, you don't have to be a sinner. That's not true. No. Category error. Uh, everyone has sinned, past tense. Not everyone is a sinner, present tense. And Jesus Christ is the one who has never sinned, period. Yeah, so Jesus Christ has never sinned. I have sinned in the past, but I'm not sinning anymore. I obey God now. Well, see, the only way you can know that everyone is still currently sinning, present tense, and will continue to sin in the future is if you're God. And you're not God, so you don't know that. No, I do know who goes to hell. I have God's word on it. This is a short list right here. It's a short list. Yeah, I do talk to Jesus, actually. I talk to him all the time. Hey, can I ask you a question? Are you going to wait for the answer? Can I ask you a question? Are you going to wait for the answer? Yeah, you can ask a question. All right, so do you believe that David in the Bible went to heaven? Yeah, he repented of his sins, though. He didn't continue in his sins. He didn't continue being an adulterer with Bathsheba. He repented of that. That's what Psalm 51 is all about. He lost his son over that. Remember the story. So he didn't continue to be an adulterer, right? He stopped being an adulterer. And it cost him a lot on earth. His son turned on him, his kingdom was torn from him, basically had trouble the rest of his life because he committed that one act of adultery. So you don't think he ever sinned after that? Well, I don't know if he ever sinned again after that, but uh, I know he repented of that sin. I don't know every detail of his life, sir. Well, then you can't say that he went to heaven or not. Well, I didn't say for sure. I said I think he did, but it, we're talking about adultery, which is what I think you're referring to. He repented of that sin. Okay, but, but listen, listen. It's a, the same thing applies to David that applies to you and me. If he went back to his sin and died in the sin, he went to hell. I have no problem saying that's what the Bible says. No, I do believe. The Bible talks about grace in Titus 2, 11 through 12, okay? It says, for the grace of God which brings salvation has appeared to all men. 
teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in the present age. So the grace of God teaches you to live holy right now. And if the grace you say you had doesn't teach you that, then you don't have the grace of God that brings salvation. That's simple. I have a question. What's your goal here? To preach the word of God. Preach the word of God. And the Bible doesn't say Christians are most disturbing for God well, I can't. What's the ratio? Of yeah, man. If you're gonna ask a question, if you're gonna ask a question, you have to wait for the answer. Talk, man, if you have, if you want to ask a question, you have to wait for the answer. Okay. Okay. First of all, you all have free will. Okay. I can't. No matter how good of a preacher I am, I can't make you come to the truth. Okay. So when I go out and preach the word of God, I preach the whole counsel of God. I preach. I preach the whole counsel of God. I preach the good news and the bad news. It's all part of God's word. You know the whole facts, so you can come to Christ the right way. If I tell you just the good news, you say, well, I can keep on being a sinner and be a Christian. I gave you a false message. I gave you a half message, a half truth. And so, can you be quiet for a second? Let me answer this question. Yeah, oh, you do. I don't. Yeah, so, so when it comes to people turning against me or how many here are on my side, that makes no difference to me. They can all be against me. I'm still going to preach God's word. No, I care if you go to hell. That's why, if, listen, if I didn't care, I wouldn't be out here. So how many more people? Everyone here who's a sinner, everyone here who's a sinner was away from God when I got here. They are away from God when I got here. And, and listen, if, 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 if preaching the truth turns them further away from God, the problem is not God's word or me, the problem is their heart. So you know for sure that none of us are Christians? No, I don't know. That's why I said it. Whoever, I said, if you were a sinner when I got here, you're still a sinner now, not because of me, because of your own sinful heart. It's your own fault you're a sinner. Well, well, listen, I'm preaching God's word. Faith comes, no, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. You're hearing the word of God. If you're not mixing the word of God in your heart with faith and receiving the sin to the, the soil of your heart, that's your fault, not my fault. My obligation is to preach the word of God to you. It's your obligation to have faith. It's your obligation to repent. It's your obligation to stop sinning, not mine. I can't, I can't do that for you, young man. You have to do it yourself. God expects you to do it. Are you going to wait for the answer? Yes, I will. Okay, good. Okay. Do you mind if I cross those two chains? No. <laughs> I'm not going to hurt you. No, you're not crossing the chains. All right. You can see me just fine from there. I don't need to see you. I need to see you. No, you're not going to do anything to me either. <laughs> nope, sorry. The one thing I just wanted to ask you, sir, is on all due respect, is... Whoa, shoot! Oh, hey, 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 young man, young man. I have one question for you, with all due respect. What are those? What are those? Yo, man, hey, for real, when we, when we get done, if you want, I'll take you to Goodwill and buy some new pants, man. Seriously. That was just sin, man. That was hate. I can, that was just sin, man. wasn't hate. That was sin. You just hated on him. I didn't hate him. I'm loving him. I'm loving him. I'm loving him. I'm telling him his pants are crazy. He needs some new pants. So says the sinner. I am a sinner. So says a violent, angry sinner. So says a violent, angry sinner. You know, on Judgment Day, when God says, Why did you keep sinning? You're not going to say, Oh, we all sinned every day. We couldn't help it. You're not going to be able to say that. You're going to have no excuses on Judgment Day, young man. No excuses. It's not a sin to judge. It's not a sin to judge. If, if it's a sin to judge, if it's a sin to judge, then God's the biggest sinner in the whole world. If it's a sin to judge, then God's the biggest sinner in the whole world. No, he didn't say I can't judge. John 7, 24, Jesus Christ says, judge with righteous judgment. Judging! Judging! The big does middle! Judging! 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 Stop judging me! Where, why aren't you guys accusing her of judging me? Where's the judging? Where's the pointing fingers? Well, stop being a hypocrite. Stop being a hypocrite. He said I, she said I can't judge and she's judging me. It's a hypocrisy. It's very simple. And, and and just just and, and just just so you know, just so you know, just just, just so you know, just so you know, if 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 you go if you if you if you if you go and pray for me today, but you still have sin in your heart, God doesn't even hear your prayers. Shut the fuck up. 
this. Anytime you shit go out. down, you go down you go anytime you pray, it's just a prayer. Now the Bible says, you don't know your Bible. That's part of the problem. Lots of Bible. Lots of Bible. So says the filthy potty mouth. Fuck you, man. Yeah, you're a Christian. You're the model of Christianity. Yeah, I can tell. Where, where, where's all the people accusing? I mean, there he goes walking away. Yes, pray like the hypocrites do, to be seen by men. Matthew 6. Pray like the hypocrites. I'm preaching, not praying. I'm preaching. I ain't preaching. No, God's word. Hey, if you think God's word is hateful, then you're on your way to hell. Simply put. If you think God's word is hateful, you're on your way to hell. So says the potty mouth. So says the potty mouth. No, I didn't tell him to go to hell. I didn't tell him to go to hell. I didn't tell them to go to hell. I never told anyone to go to hell. Well, tell them that hell awaits them. They continue to be these things. Hell is awaiting them. That's what the Bible says. Listen, I don't want I don't want anyone to go to hell. I don't want everyone to be in God's kingdom. But if you continue to do these things, you will go to hell. That's what God's word says. Matt, uh, in John chapter 7 and verse 7, Jesus Christ said, The whole world hates me. You got to testify of it that his works are evil. The whole world hates me, Jesus said. My heart's been checked. The whole world hates me because I testify of it that his works are evil. John 7, 7. Jesus Christ said it about himself. If the whole world loves you, you're of it. You're just like it. And you're on your way to hell. Not all of them. Not all of them. Well, they don't, like, in Jewish... Like before the New Testament, hell was created for the New Testament for Protestant Christians. That's not true. There's hell in the Old Testament all throughout the Old Testament. Isaiah 33. That's not. Isaiah, listen, Isaiah 30, 33. Well, hell is just an English word, young man. But the concept is found in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Young man, young man. The, the Greek word is Gehenna, okay? It's also Tartarus. In the Old Testament, you have Sheol, okay? This constant of hell in the Old and New Testament. Isaiah 30, 33 says, For Tophet, another word for hell, for Tophet was established of old. Yes, for the king it is prepared. He has made it deep and large. Its pyre is fire with much wood. The breath of the Lord, like a stream of brimstone, kindles it. Okay? Malachi 4, 1. Behold. The Lord comes. Go the day the Lord is coming. Burning like an oven. And all the proud, yes, all who do wickedly shall be stubble. And the day which is coming shall burn them up, says the Lord of hosts. It's found in old and new, young man. Not a new concept. Now, God didn't originally create hell for people, like you and me. He created it for the devil and his angels. But because people follow the devil by sinning against him every day, God will send people there too. Not his will for you that you go to hell. He wants to give you mercy and kindness and grace and forgiveness. But as long as you continue to be a sinner, he'll give you what you deserve in the end. But there is a way out, young man, through Jesus Christ. It's the way he did for you at the cross. And he and Jesus Christ is a Jew. And so with all the all believers, they were all Jews. So he comes for every tribe, tongue, and nation. He shed his blood for all, that you might be saved. So if you end up not being saved, it'll be your fault, and not his fault. Not your parents' fault, not society's fault, it'll be your fault if you're not saved. Because he wants you to be saved. And he's doing everything he can without overriding your free will to get you to be saved. Yeah, well, why is this message necessary? Like the way you're portraying it, everything. Why do you think that is necessary? This is, this is the message you see in the scriptures. Okay? No, it's not. Yes, yes it is. Yes, it is, young man. So you see all throughout the, the, the Gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, and John, what you see in the book of Acts. What you see in the Old Testament from the prophets, what you see from John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of Christ, what you see. And so I want to declare to you, I want, young man, I want to declare to you the whole counsel of God. If I tell you, if I tell you uh, all about the good stuff, but on the bad stuff, I've given you a half truth, which is the whole lie. You need to hear everything, so if you truly want to come to Christ, you know what you're in for. That's what the Bible is all about, man. So I don't want to give you just the good part. 
the all nice stuff and that's it. I want to give you the bad, the hard stuff too. You got to hear the hard stuff and the easy stuff. Yeah, but you can't rebuke people. That's not up to you. Man. No, actually, the Bible says in 2 you Timothy 4 2. No, no. 2 Timothy 4 2 says this. You can't just say that you're going to hell because of that. 2 Timothy 4 2 says, preach the word in season and out of season. Convince, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Ephesians 5 11 says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. Proverbs 27 5 says, open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. Rebuke is love. You're rebuking with the truth. That's what I've been doing all day. Because I care for you. And I want you to be saved. I will say to ask Jesus to save me. I ask him to come with my heart. I admit that I have sinned. I believe in Jesus. I believe that he died on the cross for me. I believe in all of it. But I'm a lesbian. Save. Uh, your belief does not save you, young lady. Uh, no, no. Actually, in James 2, 19 through 20, in James 2, 19 through 20, it says, you believe there is one God, you do well, but even demons believe and tremble. But do you want to know, O foolish man, that faith without works is dead? Faith without works is dead. Well, that's, that's part of the problem. No, that's not true. That's actually not true. The Bible says that there's a, there's a sin that can't be forgiven. Blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. So that must be a greater sin. The Bible says there's a sin that leads to death, so it does not lead to death, so that must be a greater sin there too. Uh, but yeah, you don't have to be a sinner at all. You shouldn't be a lesbian, you shouldn't be a drunkard, you shouldn't be a fornicator, you shouldn't be a liar or a thief, you shouldn't be a porn monster or a lustful person. You shouldn't be a sinner at all. And if you still are a sinner, you're in trouble with God. Hey, you believe, you believe the Bible, right? Yeah. All right, so Ecclesiastes 7, 20 says, uh -huh. Surely there is not a righteous man on earth uh -huh. that does good and never sins. Yeah. It just says no one on earth. Uh -huh. So that means what you're saying is false. No, that's not true. Ecclesiastes 7, 20. Well, you got to interpret, you, you got to interpret it properly, young man. Go to, Gen go to Genesis, no, go to Genesis 6, 9. What's that got to do with hey. things like that? Well, that said. go to Genesis 6-9. Let's go! Genesis 6-9. Wait, hold on a second. So you don't believe the Bible, do you? Oh, I believe okay, the Bible. Okay, then let's talk about Genesis 6-9. That's judgment on your part. Wait a minute. I don't believe. Because you won't go to Genesis 6-9, will you? Will you go to it and read it? No, no, real quick, man. Yeah. So I actually don't believe it. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 9 says this. This is the genealogy of Noah. Noah was a just man, perfect in his generations. Noah walked with God. He's talking about Noah, not you. Okay, so I thought there's no just man upon the earth. There's no righteous man upon the earth, though, I thought. But Noah was perfect. Oh, no. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Wait a minute now. Wait a minute now. Noah did not have sex with his two daughters. That's a lie. You're, 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 you're not, you don't know what you're talking about. And second, second, prove it to me then. Prove it to me then. I got to see this. And now you're blaspheming God's name. I'm not blaspheming nobody's name. I'm I wouldn't want to, want to be at that Bible study. Wouldn't want to be at that Bible study. He he thinks that Noah slept with his daughters. He's taking God's name in vain. Does, thinks we can't live righteous or holy, and you're leading a Bible study? What's the point of the Bible study? To teach God's word. To, you're not to live more holy? You're turning all of these people. This isn't God's word right here. Oh, but bless him again. Watch yourself. About to bless him in God's name again. This is God's word. This is God's word. So you don't know God's word when you see it. And you're leading a Bible study? I don't think you're fit to lead a Bible hey, study. Real quick, real quick. Real quick. Real quick. Real quick. Real quick. Real quick. When she said that she was lesbian, right? Did you say lesbianism is the bigger sin than anything? No, I didn't say that. No, I didn't say that. She said every sin's the same. And what I said was, what I said was, blasphemy of the Holy Spirit is unforgivable. So, so you, that's obviously... That's obviously a bigger sin in God's eyes. Right. Now, like now hold on a second. Hold on a second. She's, that's what you say, but it's not what God says. Jesus Christ said all sins against him can be forgiven, but sins against the Holy Spirit cannot be forgiven. But Jesus right. Christ yeah. says. Right. Now deal with that. So real quick, take it like this. Look down at the grass for a second, right? Huh? It looks the same, right? Look, same, same blood as grass, right? That's how God sees sin. They're all the same. Ooh, if you kill somebody, raise somebody, it's the same. Oh! 
<laughs> yeah. That, that's why God says that if you blaspheme the Holy Spirit, you can't be forgiven, right? Yeah, it makes a lot of sense to me. And, that, and that's why in the Old Testament, God would punish sin. Some were capital punishments, some weren't. Because they're all the same, right? If you lied in the Old Testament, you got stoned to death, right? No. If you commit adultery, you got stoned to death? Yes. Yeah, so if, if you... Not all sins are the same in that sense. That's Lot. That's not Noah. That's Lot. You better watch yourself, young man, before you lie. That's Lot. That's not Noah. No, scroll back up and find your contention, man. Noah's long forgotten by Genesis 19. Not even talked about anymore. That's Lot. Oh, admit it. Admit it, young man. Admit you're wrong. Yeah, you won't humble yourself, will you? You're full of pride. You're not fit to lead a Bible study. You don't even know God's word. And you try to lie about God's word and won't humble yourself. God gives grace to the humble. Grace to the humble. God gives grace to the humble, young man. Well, if I'm wrong, I'll admit it. That's humble. Yeah, he won't admit he's wrong. He's got pride in his heart. The Bible says in Proverbs 16, 18, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. Pride goes before destruction. God opposes the proud and gives grace to the humble. God opposes you. Hear the voice of those in hell Who are crying out in pain Someone please go warn our family So they won't come to this place This place of pain and torment Where the fires never cease Where our thirst is never quenched And we can never find release This place of outer darkness Where we weep and gnash our teeth Countless rows of endless souls are crying for relief. Hear the cries of the damned made move us to compassion. Oh, hear the cries of those in chains. And may we free them with the truth. God send me, oh Lord send me, I'll go send me, oh Lord send me, my God send me, oh God send me, I'll go send me, send me. Well Jesus came to seek and save that which was lost. Do the same, no matter what the cost. Take up your cross and follow. Bear reproach, scoffing, and shame. And though they kill us, let the blood of your people be the seed of the church again. And may the Lamb that was slain receive the reward of the suffering. And may the Lamb. Glory be to Jesus Christ, both now and forever.